Oh yeah, this is going to be a Blu-ray update. Um, it's been a while since I've done one. A mixed um, bag of titles here. Um, first one I'm going to show. The first two titles uh, were kind of uh, enough sent by uh, Signal One and Entertainment. Uh, the first film, which truly is a, it's a classic. It's a uh, Kiss of Death. Um, Henry Hathaway, uh, 1947. Uh, the plot: uh, we've got career thief um, Nick Bianco, uh, as played by Victor Mature. Uh, he's he's caught doing a jury heist, and he refuses to do a deal with District Attorney, played by Brian uh, Dunleavy. And he elects to go to jail instead. Uh, but when he learns his uh, wife is dead a few months later, Bianco agrees to rat on his former partners in return for being able to visit his two young daughters. Uh, when he's eventually paroled, it's on the condition that he assists uh, in investigations onto um, his one-time fellow prisoner psychopathic mobster Tommy, um, Tommy Udo, played by Richard Woodmark. Uh, believing his work is done, Bianco remarries and carves out a new life uh, for himself and his family. However. His newfound bliss is shattered when he learns that the case against uh, Udo uh, proves unsuccessful and the crazy killer is back on the streets of any revenge on his mind. Uh, this is film noir of the highest possible calibre. The story is riveting, characters compelling, the acting is just fantastic, cinematography exquisite and the tension just unrelenting, especially in the scenes where um, Bianco fears um, Udo might come to his house during the night and later as he waits in the restaurant before um, Udo emerges behind a curtain. It's just a very, very special film, uh, full stop. Uh, it's hard to imagine that Kiss of Death would have been quite the same in Duran Legacy without the Tommy character played amazingly by Richard Woodmark. Uh, he just nails a sense of menace and oh, sadism that seems to constantly bubble below the surface behind that unnerving laughter. Uh, he undoubtedly created one of cinema's great villains, uh, which is all the more incredible when you consider this was his first role, uh, first film role. Um, as good as Woodmark is, however, it should be said that he's matched by Victor Mature in what, you know, for me anyway, it's his best performance in, in, uh, alongside his turn as Doc Holliday and my darling Clementine. I've always thought that Mature had a wonderfully expressive face with a real sense of vulnerability beneath the tough guy exterior a quality which just makes him perfect for the role of a tough con trying to get his life back on track protect his young family uh, the scene between him and Widmark had just brilliantly played um, showcasing some of their finest work in my opinion uh, perhaps the most striking aspect of Kiss of Death uh, is just how gritty and downbeat it is the feel is enhanced by location filming in New York City and the real greater sense of authenticity, something which was creeping into film noir around this time. Then there's the constant sense of threat given of course by Richard Remarque's uh, character, um, who's responsible for surely one of the most shocking moments in cinema history. Uh, if you're not familiar with the scene I won't spoil it, except to say that it retains all of its shock value today. Um, it's so wrong and yet kind of amazing <laughs> at the same time. Uh, this is a period when film really began pushing the boundaries of the production code. Though I'm still not sure how this scene got through unscathed. Indeed, had the censors not intervened elsewhere, causing changes to the end and the removal of an entire subplot involving Nick's wife, the film would have been even more nihilistic. Uh, but even with these changes, it remains just a masterful film, which you know one really can't recommend enough. Um, now the transfer. Um, I didn't own the DVD of this, but the Blu-ray looks um, just looks fantastic. And checking it, comparison online, it's clearly derived from a new HD master. There's no damage to speak of, and the level of detail and uh, deep black levels only enhance your appreciation of the superb cinematography. Um, Twilight Time have confirmed they have this in the US, and I, and I, I really can't see them improving on the transfer of the extras. So you're far better off getting this, um, you know, getting it early and much cheaper. Uh, the extras uh, we have: there's an audio commentary by film historian um, Alan Silver and James Cassini, 
take on an old Fox DVD. They clearly know their stuff and they talk about the film's history and reception and its general context in relation to other film noir of the period. There's also an 18 minute interview with uh, Richard Woodmark from 2002 conducted at the National Film Theatre and considering he's almost 90 here uh, he's in he's in great form talks about his his time as a voice actor before his big break in film The Kiss of Death and touching upon his work with John Ford and his general approach to acting uh, this was actually on an old BFI DVD and I believe it's edited from a fuller talk which was about 70 minutes long which can be found in its entirety on BFI's excellent um, Night in the City Blu-ray and finally there's a theatrical trailer so 100% would recommend this it's absolutely again film noir at the highest possible caliber performances are amazing uh, uh, Richard Woodmark's uh, performance as well even <clears throat> influenced I believe Vincent Gallo in the period very well known gangster modelled himself on him and it's just it's a real treat so kiss of death fully recommended Uh, the second title um, is Sherlock Holmes in New York from 1976. Uh, the film begins in London, uh, 1901, with a showdown between Sherlock Holmes, played by Roger Moore, and Moriarty, uh, played by John Huston, which the latter vows revenge on Holmes while hatching the crime of the century in the process. Uh, several days later, Holmes receives a mysterious package relating to his past love, Irene Adler, played by Charlotte Rampling, compelling him to go to New York with Dr. Watson, played by Patrick McNee. Uh, once there, he discovers that Moriarty is behind an ingenious plot involving kidnap and theft. Uh, Robbie, which apparently threatens the outbreak of a world war. Of course, it forced the Holmes to outwit his old nemesis and foil his dastly schemes yet again. Uh, now, I must confess, uh, that I was very apprehensive about watching this given some of the reviews I'd read but thankfully I was you know pleasantly surprised this is a very fun film cracking script um, intriguing plot great cast who all look like they're really enjoying themselves it's, it's clearly got its tongue very firmly in uh, in cheek and if you know if, if and if you go into into it expecting something which doesn't take itself seriously I'm sure you get a lot out of it well I don't think anyone can make a case for more being a seminal on screen Sherlock which probably won't surprise anyone he's actually very entertaining in this role um, ably supported by the great Patrick McNee as Dr Watson who almost steals the show with some wonderful lines including <laughs> very funny one about rheumatism uh, the two were firm friends in real life which really contributed to the just excellent chemistry on screen. John Huston sporting a, an Irish accent of sorts is less effective as Moriarty, though he's, he's, he's got considerable presence and, you know, the delivery ensures he's still bringing something memorable to the production. Um, yeah, so while it might not be the murder by decree, that's my one of my personal favourite homes. Uh, and the Hammer Hand of the Baskervilles of the recent Robert Downey Jr. films, which which I again love. It's nonetheless a very charming and fun film, which I think most fans of Sherlock and also Roger Moore would enjoy. Um, the transfer, you know, given this is a modestly budgeted production intended for US TV with the typical limitations of fairly flat lighting and photography. Uh, the film looks very good, certainly faithful to the source. Realistically, it's it, it's hard to imagine uh, a stronger a stronger looking release, given that a 4K restoration seems extremely unlikely. I think it only came out on DVD in the US in 2014 um, as part of the Fox archives line, so an updated release over there again seems doubtful. Um, in regard to the extras, uh, Signal One gives you the option to view the film in an alternative widescreen ratio. This might be because it received a theatrical release in some territories. Uh, but it's quite apparent um, watching watching the film wasn't intended for this aspect ratio. And as much as I would recommend watching it in the standard format, you know, it's, it's nice that both options are provided. There's also an excellent audio commentary with Sir Roger Moore, which was done in 2012 uh, for the Australian Madman DVD. Most interesting of all is the revelation that uh, Oliver Reed was the original choice for Moriarty, which would have been quite something. Um, but he just comes across as a as a really, really you know nice guy, and you know as, as fun memories of the production. So yeah, Sherlock Holmes in New York. You know, I, I really would recommend this. A lot of fun. I really enjoyed the performances in it, and uh, yeah, it's well recommended. 
And again, you know, the thanks so much to Signal One for sending me these titles. You know, fantastic. I mean, you know, please, you know, show me your support. You know, you know, because they deserve it. So thank you for that. Right. Um, the next couple of titles, the mainly kind of Arrow uh, ones. Some I haven't seen. Some I have. Uh, I picked up uh, Bridal Reanimator set. This is a beautiful one. I sold the media book. I had a media book for a while. And Bridal Reanimator is weird. I mean, I'm a massive fan of Reanimator. This is absolutely, you know, chock full of extras. I haven't seen Bridal Reanimator for so long. It's weird. I have more memories of the third film than I have of the second. So no, I, I, I look forward to um, revisiting that. Next film, is, well, I think there's at least there's three different versions of this film. I mean, Fair Play Arrow have really gone above and beyond with this um, bloodbath. Absolutely just full of extras on this. Uh, there's at least three different cuts. I remember not reading about some of it. I know, I think... It was most, most of it filmed in Dubrovnik, in Croatia. So yeah, I mean, that's, I mean, God, that's absolutely full. Um, one film I did, I, I, I've seen many a times. I wanted to pick this up um, again. I don't know, I'm older, but at least it's uh, My Darling Clementine, John Ford. Again, it might not be the most accurate portrayal of the um, the Earp uh, feud with the Clantons, but it's still a hell of a good, it's still a great, great film really is uh victor mature as well again i mentioned him earlier his portrayal is a uh dark holiday is fantastic it's 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 really really good really great film it's just beautifully shot beautiful and I'm, I'm just an enormous john ford fan right now there's a mixture of stuff we've got larry cohen's the stuff i like this film it's it's not there's a few like body melt films. It's not it's not street trash. Street trash is one of my all time faves, which I really need to pick up on Blu-ray. I've had really do. That's um definitely need to pick that up. But um the stuff it's good, there's some good body melt see. I had another body melt film in my mind. I can't think of the other one at the moment. But there are a few of them, but that's 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 probably, you know, medium kind of class of them. Street trash being the best for me, not but um Honeymoon Killers, which I've had a lot of good things about. A lot of good things about Honeymoon Killers. Again, you know, I, I need to catch up with some of these artists. I bought loads of them um, a while back. I'm just trying to, uh, I'm trying to just catch up with them. Uh, we've got What Have You Done to Solange. We have Spaghetti Western, uh, Requiescent. Again, you know, I'm, I'm sorry to, you know, not really talk about these titles again. I'm. I'm have another chance to see him. Yeah, I've been fairly kind of busy. I've, I've seen a lot of the other titles, not really some of the Arrow ones. Again, I bought these ages ago. I'm just it's been kind of a backlog. Now this one I do want to watch, and I really must. Oh God, oh God, I really forgot. I, I bought this ages ago, and I said I'm watching. Yeah, I put uh, the tenderness of of the wolves. Is this about? Is this? I'm trying to think. Yeah, for a time and the butcher of Hanover and the vampire of Hanover was a German serial killer. I can't say. Is this loosely based on? Oh Christ, what was his name? German, there was, I think there was two German serial killers in the early 1920s. Oh God, I can't think of his name. Was, I can't tell if it was the vampire of Dusseldorf. Uh, played by Pia Laurie as well, which is absolutely amazing actor. Yeah, I'm gonna, I think I might stick that on over the weekend and watch that. Now another film I actually start watching. <laughs> I start watching this. I started, there's only so much I can see Sean Connery in, in his pants and you know, be a very, you know, now you might be a great sight for some, but you know, and I, I was having a good laugh about it, a good kick. But it's um, Zardos. Um, oh man, uh, I, I just, I, I kind of, I wasn't in the right frame of mind. I think I was kind of tired, and thank God I think I was tired because it just about got me through. I got about halfway. I thought oh, I just need to stop this because it's, it's not even fun in a kind of a good way. But you know, you know, I might revisit it. And again, you know, <laughs> just another example of thank God, thank God. Um, Borman never did a Lord of the Rings film in the 70s just thank I, I like him in certain things but I think he's one of the most overrated directors and just just with his ideas of Lord of the Rings oh god Frodo oh god having sex with Galadriel and all that stuff oh god I could just I could just imagine how bad it would be and that's I mean that film is bad but just just the 70s Lord of the Rings how bad it would have been uh, we've got Thieves Highway which you can't say LG Cobb love LG Cobb uh, really, really good actor. And I, I, again, I need to watch this as well. It's the same. I, I can't. I don't understand why I haven't watched some of these Arrow titles again. It's just been a massive backlog. Um, I, I had the German 
it wasn't really a media book it was kind of you know, you can't really call it a media book exactly where I got the Oxbow Instant this is a great great film this is well worth seeing I definitely recommend this directed by William Wellman really good film I think Wellman did he do Public Enemy did he do Public Enemy yeah he did the Public Enemy Cagney yeah they'd say um, that's a great film really good film I don't I, oh, it's, it's weird man you know this I'm thinking about flipping back to the other I'm not a massive fan this you know this we've got a uh, oh no it is the original cover on um, the Count Yorga films now Count Yorga I'm a, I'm a massive fan of both films uh, I think if you like these films definitely check out again Black Killer Norlis Tapes another film another two films that I've got I haven't seen the second one but the first one was very good very oh, I need to remind myself if that is it what about Quarry who plays Count Yorga uh, I think it is again yeah directed by Bob Kelgen who who directed Scream Black Killer Scream really good really atmospheric really good really I prefer I prefer the first Cat Yorga film the second film again but god it's got its moments the scene with the, the sort of the the home invasion really dark but just a great film I tell you there's some there's some, real, some real creepy bits in this Cat Yorga I tell you when, when he goes he 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 really, <laughs> he really does go he's, he's very very intimidating and pretty scary I've got to be honest uh, this is another contemptible film I bought um, I mean it's really bad it's not even good in a good way it's not even good in, bad in a funny way um, Hawk the Slayer just just horrible horrible film just not even Jack pa uh, Jack Palance does kind of for the laughs he kind of brings but it's just incredibly bad what year is this is this 82 is this post Conan I, I, I assume it is oh it's really bad man Oh, it's so bad. It's like I could oh, no, nah, it's it's just really awful. Just I'm trying to I was kinda of laughing at some I was mainly laughing at Palance, but that that's about it. Uh we've got Countess Dracula. I think we've picked one of the only real kind of hammer films I haven't seen. I've seen a hell of a lot of the vampire kind of films. I think the only other one I haven't seen is uh, Dracula AD AD uh, 70. AD seventy two. Um, and I hear that's absolutely awful but uh, yeah that's one of the only kind of mm, related kind of vampire films I haven't seen in the Hammer franchise I picked up uh, George Harrison Walcott I hear good things about this so in, is it late 70s or early 80s Britain uh, he's a tough loner detective yeah he's got a cast of good British Cassie Quasi Warren Clark early Rip Mal performance as well Mass I love Rip Mal so much Really adore it, Mark. God bless him. Uh, we have from the uh, director of Bullet Robbery with Stanley Baker. I got another. St I think if I got another Stanley Baker film in this update, I hope I have. I hope I put it in this update because I haven't had a chance to see Robbery yet. But the other Stanley Baker films, and I hear great things about this. Stanley Baker, great actor. Again, you know, so many James Booth as well. Oh, I love James Booth. Just so so entertaining. Now, I mentioned earlier uh, Count Yorga uh, and Black Killer and all his tapes, and probably the first. Oh God, um, Kolchak, the uh, Night Stalker film, Night Stalker for the first Night Stalker, not the second one, but similar films. And this is definitely this is definitely similar to it. Um, House of Dark Shadows obviously based on the series Dark Shadows which I, which I haven't seen I hear great things I tried um, no I didn't even try I, I'm not a, I'm not even going to watch the Johnny Depp one this was this was fantastic very dark great performances again some awesome great great gore near the end fantastic um, Jonathan Frid uh, again Dan Curtis who uh, the Kolchak Knight and did, did many other things as well. So underrated. He's he's fantastic as uh, Barnabas Collins. This is a, it's really really good. I, I really recommend this. Again, I don't know how loyal it is to the to the TV show, but you know it's 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 thoroughly enjoyable. Definitely, if, if, again, those films I mentioned earlier. Now I got the, I picked the second one as well, Night of Dark Shadows. I hear this isn't as good, but you know I'm going to watch it because I, I watched the other one uh, yesterday. So I'm going to give this a watch, you know, to see if. 
Well, it's, you know, to see if it's, it, it can't be as bad as some people say, but yeah, that's Night of the Dark Shadows. Now this film, the next film, is so entertaining. I, 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 you know when they say Friday night movies, and that's kind of sometimes an insult to a movie making out like, oh, you don't really have to pay attention. This is a great film for any night. Venom. I, I was so pleasant, I was so happy this was as good as I wanted it to be. Sterling Hayden, Oliver Reed, oh, Klaus Kinski. I know he was a sort of disgusting pervert, but my God, he was so entertaining. And I do, oh, I love him in a weird way. I know he was contemptible. I know he was, but... And it's great as well when you read the booklet and it talks about... <laughs> of course, him and Oliver Reed and Kinski, like, you know, two alpha males, but in, but in like, you know, you know, competing stags. Um... Oh, this is so interesting. I can't begin to tell you how entertaining this is. Uh, shall I read the blurb at the back? Oh, you basically got a uh, woman and a child. She's quite well to do. Uh, their chauffeurs, Oliver Reed, um, and maid, Susan George, they're trying to abduct her child to in, in a sort of a ransom situation Sterling Hayden's the kid's grandfather he's a former he's been to Africa he's he's dealt with various safaris and, and such Klaus Kinski <laughs> Klaus Kinski is a legendary terrorist brought over to, to to grab you know to grab the child the child at the same time is a oh god collects a lot of reptiles and he ends up buying a snake there's a mix up here. <laughs> a fucking black mamba <laughs> that gets unleashed in the house. It's so, so entertaining, this film. I can't begin to tell you how entertaining it is. It's so brilliant. I think he turns up doing a decent Scottish accent, Nicole Williamson. Oh, God, it's so entertaining. Uh, I swear, it's just so good. The ending's amazing. It's uh, it's fantastic. It, it's as good as... <laughs> it's fantastic. It's well worth watching, Venom. Definitely one of the one of the most entertaining films I've seen in in in, in a while. It's really really good. And again, I, I've one I'll show I'll show this first because there's a couple of scream titles. I'll show this is Bad Moon. I had the old oh god when I had the DVD. This was a, it's a US DVD or German DVD. I had this is a cracking '90s horror. Film. I know '90s isn't really kind of revered as a real you know decade for horror. But it's told in the uh, from the eyes of the family dog Thor, who's I think the uncle's been bitten. Uh, is, it, oh, is it Michael Parry? Is, is it Michael? Yeah, Michael Parry's been bitten. He's a werewolf, and the dog's trying to protect the family um, from the werewolf. And it's really original film, really enjoyable. And I, I like the effects of the werewolf in this as well. It's a really good one, Batman. I've always liked it. I went out my way to get the DVD ages back. Um, another werewolf film which I would thoroughly recommend um, and this is great you know this is great stuff screen release and some of these are smaller titles uh, The Boy Who Cried Werewolf uh, Father and Son um, his parents um, divorced go to their favourite cabin the dad gets attacked he manages to kill this thing that attacking them gets bitten turns into a werewolf <laughs> and the boy is, is generally the only the only person around to see his father you know running around like a maniac such an such an entertaining film it, it's really really good I'm trying to think is the writer oh, I think the writer or is it the director the writer director is the guy who turns up as the guy who leads the hippie commune in this really entertaining film so good I mean the, the werewolf's not amazing well, it's more of a wolf man really but look past that and there's a damn good film in here. Honestly, it's really good. Boy Cry Werewolf, really entertaining. And I picked up now. Oh, I was gonna, I, I'm not really that bothered of the the cover on um, Shout Sight. I mean, I was more. Um, yeah, I was more kind of happy with this. Um, yeah, uh, it's um, Return of the Living Dead. I, I had um, the Arrow uh, release, but you know, I, I had to pick this up. I mean, it's just absolutely just awesome film it's one of those films that you can have various kind of like you know copies of it and it wouldn't be that many and again this cover art is absolutely fantastic again you know Scream's cover art is a bit hit and miss at times but that's fantastic um, oh god there's a mixture of titles and there's actually some good stuff here um, picked up James Mason in Child's Play which I hear really good things about I love James Mason so much set in um Catholic Boys School and I bought this in response to another film I bought in the update which I'll show 
you know, child's play. Again, I, I am sorry if I haven't seen some of these titles. I do apologise. I know it, there's nothing annoying you when you're showing these titles. <laughs> I don't always think there's a few more. I really, you know, this update should be more kind of, you know, contained. Um, yeah, this is one of the only horror anthologies I don't ha I, I didn't have. I wanted to pick it up. It's um, Donald Sutherland. Who else we got? In? Not Donald Sutherland. Um, Joan Collins, Jack Hawkins, Donald Pleasance. Peter McHenry, uh, Tell Us a Witness Man. I hear this isn't one of the best horror anthologies. I mean, I've probably seen, oh Christ, I don't even know how many horror anthologies I've seen. But I hear, you know, you know okay stuff about it. Um, another, one of the only old John Wayne films I haven't seen. There's only a handful, really. Again, Stars Bruce Cabot, who's crossed the mind, Harry Carey in this as well. Um, Orange and the Bad Man. I love Wayne. Wayne looks so good on the back of this. Love Wayne so much. I absolutely adore him. Really, just one of the just just so larger than life. Again, just the other day, just for some reason, I was just flicking the terrestrial channels, and I just come to the bit in the searches when he arrives after the Comanche raid. Oh God, such a you know really underrated actor. You know, so many great performances. I think I know Todd Cast, but again, this performance as well, it's just a fantastic film. Great cover art as well. Sons of Jima. unbelievable film. Really good film. Fantastic. Love Wayne's performance in this. John Stryker, oh, that's great, love that cover art as well, it's fantastic, really really good, great film, God, there's, <laughs> there's loads of stuff here, again I have seen some of these so that's okay, Gary Cooper and Distant Drums, can't really call it, oh, they say it's like a Floridan western, I don't know you can call it a western, but uh, set in 1830s or 40s Florida, um, I've told you, a Seminole, Seminole, one of the Seminole Wars, um, and you know, really well filmed, great, you know, great colour in the film, Gary Cooper's great performance, really shows the Seminole in a good light, I think really, well, quite a brutal light, but it's, it's really good one, good film, thoroughly recommend it, you know, really good, roaring action, good fun, really, really good, I love Gary Cooper, but that's good, another fantastic western, one of my real faves. Only the Valiant, Gregory Peck. Oh, this is fantastic. Kind of a wild bunch kind of thing to it. Oh no, Dirty Dozen, um, Gregory Peck, and he's got to stop uh, the Apaches coming to this pass. Michael Ansara plays the leader of the Apache, gets a group of mixture of ne'er-do-wells and drunkards um, to hold the pass with him. Uh, it's 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 a really really good, Lon Chaney's great in this. Neville Brown's fantastic. War Bond, who's just brilliant in everything. Just a just a great, really nasty for the time as well. Because I think this is about 52, 53. This is a great film. I thoroughly recommend that. Hell of a good western. Oh, this is being <laughs> this is being re-released as well. Can't believe it when you buy these. I know. Um, not the Grizzly, Clint Walker. Well, oh, Clint Walker, man. My God. Absolute beast of a man. Any guy was perfect to play Superman back in the 50s or 60s. It was Clint Walker. Just barrel chested big beast. Big Jim Cole. Inherited land in Wyoming. Has a great fight. One of many of his fights with Leo Gordon. Just a great film. Really good. Love Clint Walker. This is a great... Oh, we're getting to some good stuff now. Okay, I'm trying to... What am I showing last time? Okay, well, I'm kind of all over the place. Right. Uh, we have Sands of the Kalahari, amazingly entertaining film. Oh god, we've got a mixed bag in this. Got a great cast. Plain lands, crashes. Uh, we've got Suzanne York, Nigel Davenport, Theodore Bikel, Harry Andrews, Stanley Baker, and Stuart Whitman. And they're surrounded by baboons. <laughs> As time passes, Stuart Whitman eventually asserts his dominance as the alpha <laughs> of this group of stranded people, and it just plays out just wonderfully filmed. Cyan Phil from Zula does it, and he does a fantastic job. Bru I have to be honest, there's a scene in this involving some poor. Oh, I'm not sure what. To is it a is it an impala which they kill? It's really brutal. I have to say, I was quite shocked. See men just brutally stabbing a deer to death because they're dead. I mean, it was really, it, really brutal for the time. And Whitman's just, just blowing baboons away left, right, and centre. And it's just, oh god, man, such a, such a great ending. <laughs> it really is. Just Whitman bare top fighting, you know, the the lead troop of the, of the baboons. It's just, oh, just it sounds just crazy as I'm saying it. It's, it's thoroughly entertaining film. Really, really good. 
a film which I think is better than the original. I know it's going to sound kind of mad, but Return of a Man Called Horse. Uh, Richard Harris returns to help the Sioux, who have been driven out their lands by a mixed band of trappers. And, oh, I can't think of the Indian tribe that drive them off. Oh, I can't think of their name. Um, it's not oh, it's, it's not the Crow. It's, it's a more kind of lesser known tribe. I can't remember. But um, yeah, he drives them off and Harris begins to... The Yellow Hand Sioux retains their pride, gets them back eventually to an amazing climatic battle. Wonderfully shot film. It's such a well-directed film. Great acting. And I enjoy it more than the first film. I know that sounds crazy, but again, you know, Jeffrey Lewis as well, you know, when I see him, he's disgusted. Was it the latest Oscars? Was it, when did Jeffrey Lewis die? Was it the year before? I remember the Oscars and, and, and they didn't um, honour the guy. He'd been around in acting for like 40 years. It pisses me off. Someone like Jeffrey Lewis, you know, can not get remembered in some, oh, you know what I mean, some no-mark actor can, you know. It's, it's, it's a real, it's, it's a real shame. Outsider, uh, guy, Vietnam vet. God, this video is sometimes can't for ages. So, um, uh, Vietnam vet. Hears stories from his grandfather and joins the provisional IRA. I have to say, very entertaining film. Um, he starts his life off in Armagh, then he goes in Belfast. Brutal. I think the first half's better than the second. Uh, it's got a fairly decent feel of Belfast. Obviously not filmed there for you know various reasons. Um, but it's but but in the end it's got a good feel. Um, I think there was a beginning part cut out with the grandfather relating stories to him as a child, which might have been a good bookmark, period for, especially with the end. But it's it's a really really good one. I recommend it. The subtitles on this are an absolute disgrace. So if you know anything about the geography of Ulster, it's it's just insane. It's replacing Ulster with Ultra and loads of mad kind of stuff. It's um, but yeah, it's it's a very very good film. Um, Anthony Schaffer's Absolution, Richard Burton, Richard Burton's um, as uh, priest uh, in a Catholic school, and it it. It spirals out to a murder mystery involving the boys. Wonderful film. It's such a. I can't remember the kid. Oh, what's the kid's name out of um, Kez? Oh, I'm going to forget his name. David Bradley. It's a, it, it, his performance is so fantastic in this. And so there's a scene of quite wonderful violence near the end of the film. And But again, the film's not meant for it. You know, it's just a scene I remember. It was so shocking. That's what really you know what made it memorable um but it's a wonderful film one of burton's best performances of the 70s again it was it was a time where the alcoholism was really hitting burton hard you know but this is a fantastic film absolution in fact hang on a minute, i'm trying to think of what year was this 78 yeah quite late on um but yeah this is fantastic. i think exodus 2 was one or two years before i mean the performance is just skyrocketing better and the last part of the update, I picked up two steelbooks. I'm going to check this film out for a while. Um, 71, uh, Young Soldier, played by, I can't think of his name, Jack. God, I can't think of his name, the young guy playing him. I'll probably remember it in a minute. Um, it's not Jack O'Donnell, is it? Yeah, is that his name, Jack O'Donnell? His, you know, his performance is very good as a young uh, para in Northern Ireland. Um, it's weird the film it never really kind of gets off going it never really it never really feels like it's in belfast i know it was filmed in the north of england and i think that shows it it never feels i mean i heard people talk about this film that you could really feel it and you, know, you could you know, the atmosphere was amazing and i didn't really feel that and from a guy who's kind of you know I've, I've studied the troubles a fair bit and i've seen a lot of a lot of films although there's not that many films really kind of covering it but I don't think the director really kind of really feels the kind of the conflict. The most realistic scene in this, and the, the best acting, and I don't normally say this because child actors annoy me. The young lad playing uh, the Protestant kid, and the, I think his uncle's in the UDA, UVF. I think it could be UDA. He's the most kind of almost. Uh, you could really f believe that character when he takes him through the lines and takes him to that a loyalist pub. That was the most believable bit. It, it, it's it. Other than that, it kind of spiraled out of control, and it was nice to see like the um, some of the. So I think what did they have in it? Did they have the force research unit or the military reconnaissance force, one of the intelligence units, which um, 
well, did a hell of a lot of naughty things in Northern Ireland. Um, and that was good, but you know, it, it, it just it, it just never really it never did anything for me, which is a shame really, again, because I, I I enjoy the conflict. I think. I don't know, I don't think it really knew what it wanted to be, but the last film, which I do love, and I saw this at the cinema, I love it even more because the reviewers hated it, which makes me feel a lot better because I really couldn't care what they think, but I love the first film. And this is the Steelbook. Again, I'm not massive on Steelbooks, but I had to get this, and Steelbooks are made. London has fallen. As a massive fan of action films, this really hit the nail. Just fantastic. I, I think... It's just, it's just everything you want. It's just absolutely just crazy film. Just enjoy it. Enjoy it as an action film. And all these peeps, some of these reviewers, especially all the whole Twitter crowd we're getting, then panties in a twist about, oh, certain lines, like, fuck head of Stan. I was like, oh, come on, are you serious? Are you really going to be that bothered about that? Uh, you know, I mean, my God, I mean, when the, when the violence was really going, the first real attack, when the heads of state are being wiped out and... <laughs> Butler's getting the present out, uh, and then Butler's on a one man. What's his name? I think it's Mike Banning, which is a good, good name to choose. He's just absolutely running amok. I was almost softened the mouth. I was absolutely, as, as, a, as a fan of action films, I was absolutely loving it. I mean, people being just wiped out left, right, and centre. It's just, it's just, a, <laughs> just a great film. So many funny lines, you know. Just it's, it's so away. It's like a, it's, it's just everything like an action film should be. And again, you know, people, you know, I saw some of the like reviews on Twitter. And I think, I think a lot of them come from blokes who are very. I, I think they 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 see people like um. I don't know. It's it's it, it, it's weird. I I don't really know where they're coming from. I th I think they're they're scared of the the sheer manliness of, <laughs> of Butler. You know, I mean, he's so so alpha in this. It's unbelievable. But, you know, but as a fan of action films, I love that. You know, I mean, I know people talk about the Expendables, but the Expendables was so PC. Not, not PC. It was, you know, when it, it was rated as a 12, it was never going to be truly violent. This is just, oh, so... Violence is so good in this, you know, just... Oh, the bit, you know, when he says, you know, that's the sound of your brother dying and stuff, you know, when he... <laughs> is it unnecessary? Of course it is. But, you know, it's just fantastic. I mean, I don't know about another one. I don't really know how far we could go. Could we go with Moscow has fallen? Beijing has fallen? I don't really know with the current climate. Certainly not Paris has fallen. That's not going to happen. Uh, but but this is this is just great. I loved it. Absolutely loved it. You know, I could watch it again. It's just it's just sheer entertainment. Just fantastic film, and I would recommend it to anybody. So that's the end of the update. This update has gone for so long. I do apologise. Considering I haven't seen some of these titles as well. So yeah, um, if you've got any comments about the titles I haven't seen, you know, please comment. Um, thank you for subscribing. Thank you for comments. I'm sorry if I get late back to them. I'm just again slightly busy, but. Again, thank you, and I'll be back with another video shortly, so cheers.